Ariones, you still got to tell them more about your wife, that she was a tennis player. She played pro in Sweden. Have you played her in tennis? And yeah. who typically wins? She beats me with the left arm. Welcome to another episode of New and Blue. I'm Gabby Shirley here with Jonas Johansson, a goaltender for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We are here at the Florida Aquarium, which is about a 10 minute walk from Amelie Arena. Tell me, have you been here before? I have actually, yeah. We visited it like two weeks ago. We walked past it a few times and I just, I had to go in someday. So yeah, it's a great spot. So you already toured this place. Was there one particular attraction that you really liked? I liked all of it, I think. The stuff behind us now is pretty cool, I think. I don't know, I just get interested by that. <laughs> so if I catch you looking behind us, I mean, it's okay. It's <laughs> yeah. okay, the fish are pretty cool. All right, so, Jonas, you gotta tell me, have you had a chance in your short time here in Tampa, also look at this, <laughs> I'm gonna get distracted. Yeah. Have you had a chance to explore this city yet? Yeah, we've been pretty busy with the hockey, obviously, but uh, trying to do stuff uh, on our off days to see the city and see the neighborhood. And uh, yeah, we love it so far. It's really, really great. Have you visited any other spots that stick out to you aside from this aquarium? Before training camp started, we visited uh, Anna Marie Island down south, which was really nice. We uh, visited a couple of dog beaches with our dog. So uh, yeah, that's about it. And then this downtown area with the river walk and stuff. So you might have just touched on it, but can you tell us what you like to do when you're not stuck inside at an arena? I just try to spend time with uh, me and my wife and my dog. Uh, we uh, try to get the dog tired, <laughs> so Dog Beach is a good spot, or uh, go out and eat at restaurants at night, that's about what we do right now. Now, this is perhaps an off-season activity, but of course, I looked at your Instagram. Lots of pictures with you and fish. Are you an avid fisherman? Yeah, I think so. I haven't been able to do it here yet, but I would love to try it sometime. What do you fish for? Back home is mostly pike or perch, or we go up in the mountains and we fly fish for trout and char and stuff. So yeah, not what we have here really. This is a little more exotic, but I would love to try it out sometime. Now this might've been a one and done thing, but I also saw you ice fishing. And I always think that that is so interesting. I've never done it. Can you please tell me about that? We did a lot uh, of that when I was growing up as a kid. I think it was just a great activity. You can just drill a bunch of holes in the ice and put out this, uh, I don't even know what to call it. You, you put like one rod in each, in each hole and you can just sit by the fire, you can skate, you can ski on the ice for the whole day. And then once in a while you get a fish and it's just, uh, just an extra high. So. It's a great, great activity as a kid, and it's also one that stuck with me growing up. So you were skating when it was slow, no fish biting, and then you would see the rod move and you would have a fish. Yeah, kind of. You would, you would be the fastest one to the hole if you had your skates on. So that's also, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of fun, everything with that. Now you gotta be honest with me. Does your wife like to participate in these outdoorsy activities with you? I just met her a second Yeah, time. no, she loves it. She's, uh, that's probably one of the big reasons we get along so good together. We have kind of the same hobbies. She doesn't come on the long fishing trips, but we, uh, every summer back home, we, uh, at least once every summer, we go up north and we uh, stay in a cabin and uh, just living out in the outdoors, you know? What can you tell us about your wife? She's great, she's the uh, biggest supporter of me, and she's always always there for me, always got my back. A lot of ups and downs through the past years. We moved around a lot, but now we feel like we're in a great spot. We got a great home back home in Sweden. We got a great family, we got, we're starting a great family here, and we're in a great spot here in Tampa, so life is good right now, for sure. Arionis, you still got to tell them more about your wife. Am I correct in thinking that she was a tennis player? Yeah, that's right. She uh, she played pro in Sweden for a few years, and uh, it really runs in her family. Her dad and the brother play, so their whole family is really racket sports enthusiasts. So I will get my <laughs> I will get beaten in any racket sport, really. <laughs> Have you played her in tennis, and yeah. who typically wins? Uh, she beats me with the uh, left arm, so it's not really 
much to talk about there. And along those same lines though, perhaps another reason she's not playing too, too much tennis. Are you guys expecting your first baby? Yeah, we are. If everything goes well, uh, we're gonna get a baby girl in February. So that's exciting. <laughs> what are your emotions surrounding that? I mean, it's really everything you think about when you're at home. It's all, it's a lot of preparation going into it. I mean, we're, both of us are really excited and we're, it's all you think about, really. Now you mentioned that she has been your greatest support system. Um, how have the two of you been able to navigate your journey since your NHL debut in February of 2020? Because there have been lots of moves and lots of cities. When we first met, I played in the second league in Sweden. And uh, well, I mean, <laughs> you never know how far it's gonna go. But like I said, she always supported me all the way from the start. And, Lots of team, lots of moves, lots of cities, lots of hotels, just living in a suitcase basically. But right now, uh, I don't think there's a better place we could be at. We're in a great organization, great city. We're just enjoying it right now. Enjoying it and as much as you can, considering there's still a lot going on, but have you allowed yourselves to reflect on how you got to this point? During a season, you try to stay kind of neutral, even if you got four wins in the back or you got four losses in the back, you still gotta have the same performance. You gotta play as good as you can, so not, not get too high, not get too low. But overall in the big picture, I mean, I'm really proud of the journey we've done together from the start, from that second league in Sweden to Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, that's pretty unreal. But right now for the moment, we're just taking it day by day, game by game. And yeah, it's a long year, so we're gonna have fun with it too. How would you describe the start of this chapter with the Tampa Bay Lightning? I want to hear it in your words. We had a great training camp, great preseason games. Hit a few bumps here early in the year, but right now we're in a good spot and we just gotta come to work every day and be sharp and be good and have fun with it and try to win every night. And Jonas, this can apply to your entire journey or even just here with the Lightning, but what are you most proud of at this point in time? I'm proud of the spot we're in right now, but with this organization, that's something I could only dream of a few years ago. And I'm also proud of what me and Len built together. We got a great home back home in Sweden. We got a great family, both on her side and my side. And uh, yeah, we got this girl coming in February. So that's something I'm probably even more proud of than the hockey, but that's probably the best answer I can give you. <laughs> All right, Jonas, we are now going to the lightning round. This is a tradition with every new and blue episode. I'm going to ask you a this or that question, and you just have to tell me your preference. Okay, so in honor of creatures here, what is your preference, going to an aquarium or perhaps seeing animals at a zoo? Both are pretty good, but uh, I say the aquarium. Because I'm a fisherman, big fan of fishes. <laughs> so yeah, I had to go with that. Otters or sea turtles? More familiar with otters. In Sweden, we don't have much turtles, so go with that. Otters are pretty cute. Seahorses or jellyfish? Seahorses. Jellyfish are kind of creepy. <laughs> are you racing through the establishment or are you taking your time and examining every animal in every exhibit? No, I'm more taking my time, I want to say, yeah. There's no rush when you're in a place like this. And is that because you simply can't get enough or because you're reading all the descriptions and history of the animal? I can read some weird history notes, but also can just get stuck on a glass wall like this. You can just get stuck here. You're doing a good job not getting too distracted. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, are you pulling out your phone or are pictures and videos just worthless? They don't do it justice. I take way too little photos. I wish I took more, but uh, my wife take more pictures, so that's good, I, I can look at her phone. When you are touring an aquarium, are you getting a snack or are you just all business focused on the exhibit? No, I'm more I do the exhibits first and then we go for a snack. Are you buying a souvenir or is the gift shop not even on your radar? Mm, no, not really, not really. If we were to buy something, it would be for a dog or for or for someone else. And this is 
I was gonna say, you might have already told us this. This is your second time here, but you're here for us, so thank you. But if you go to an aquarium and you love it, are you coming back or are you like, okay, it was great, I'll need to go back? No, I love to come back. Really? For sure, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. It's a great spot. So we're gonna do this again next week. <laughs> Same time. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, now we have a little surprise. Some special guests, I would like to welcome them onto the set. So this right here is a Nuru. He's our male African black-footed penguin. And right next to Nuru is Reef. She's our female African black-footed. Wow. And she is 16 years old and he's three. Well, I've never seen a penguin this close before. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. Cool. Wow. wow. So they live about 10 to 15 years in the wild um, and a little bit longer, so double or triple that in human care. So. Um, Reef has a long life left to live in human care for sure, and Nuru is quite young. This is to uh -oh. open his oh, name. They definitely accident. poop a lot. Okay, great. Good to know. So maybe it's good Watch that you're shoes. not sitting on my lap. <laughs> okay. How many of them you got here? Ten total. Ten total? Yeah. What's the pearls mean on the wings? So that is question. Yeah, that's their identification bracelet. So you can see that Reef's is white and Nuru's is black. So that's how we tell male and female apart. Okay. And then each bead actually corresponds, um, each color corresponds to a number, and those are the last three numbers of their ID number. Mm. So it's just kind of like a name tag, essentially. Okay. Well, this has been such a treat. Thank you guys for introducing us to these two. Jonas, any final thoughts on meeting the penguins? Yeah, it's really great. Yeah, I've never seen them up close before. <laughs>